everyone uh, let's begin working on this beautiful onam special terracotta set i start off with a slab of 0.6 cm in thickness i smoothen this using my fettling knife it's a relatively easy set to create and the outcome is just beautiful i'm using a set of these oval shaped cookie cutters It's a shape that I usually don't work with a lot, uh, but um, I have made a, a, a similar set, um, rather not, not the entire video though, uh, but shown the end product on my, um, on my YouTube channel. I'll try and link that as well. I think that was in a combination of gold and uh, I think red, if I'm not wrong. So typically what I usually do is, um, you know, around Onam, I try and see if I can create a piece maybe, but in most cases it's usually in gold. This time uh, it's, it's more of an oxidized kind of a look to it, an oxidized silver. So by the way, this slab is 0.3 centimeters in thickness and this is obviously for the earrings. I smoothen this as well using my fettling knife. I'm using a small round shaped cookie cutter for the stud part and I'm going to be cutting um, a pair of oval shaped ones um, and that's going to basically come as a hanging right below these circular ones. So now that I have all of the individual parts ready, I smoothen each of them the sides, the edges. I'm using a little bit of oil. Uh, some of you have asked me in the past as to uh, if there is a specific oil that I use. Um, not really, it doesn't matter. Uh, I use anything that, um, that I have access to. Coconut oil, um, olive oil, whatever basically that, um, that I use basically for cooking. So I just use a little bit of that. So with the designing aspect as well, I have chosen to keep this pretty easy, uh, very simple. In fact, I just use a cookie, uh, used a cookie cutter and um, parts of a pen, uh, my needle tool and then a little nozzle. For the edges, uh, just adding a little more design using the uh, needle tool. making a hole uh, through the pendant and this is obviously keeping in mind that I'm going to be assembling this using a gear wire. I'm also trying to be very careful with that process because I don't want the pendant to split or crack. Adding a couple of gungru beads at the base. So I think I have about eight of them. I have about eight gunguru beads at the base. For all of the smaller pieces, um, just again adding a similar design using parts of a pen and a needle tool. Once again, adding a hole to these individual um, individual pieces. Six come on either sides of the pendant. Six such oval pieces come on either sides <coughs> on either sides of the pendant. Once again, just doing a check. attaching a single guru bead at the base. I did the same thing for the earrings as well. Uh, the only difference is obviously both of them, the top, that is the circular part and the oval part needs to come together with the help of a U-pin, rather with a, with a pair of uh, U-pins. So when I looked at the pendant, I 
thought it was a little plain and I think some more texture would have uh, would have looked nice and hence I added uh, these little dots so there everything is ready um, I let this dry for a couple of days and once the set is completely dried it's fired in an electric kiln Once fired, we can begin painting upon these. So if you see, it's it's fired, got this beautiful terracotta color, much lighter. I've got the beads as well. These are really small beads that I'm going to be using for assembling. The colors are black, gold, silver, and a, and a maroon kind of a color. The brushes, I'm just using a flat brush, my liner brush, and a number six um, round tip soft bristle brush. I start off with a really, really diluted coat of black and I'm applying this only on the front part of um, the pieces because that's where the design is and you'll very soon see why I'm doing that. And let me repeat that this is an extremely light coat so it doesn't have a 100% coverage. I just need the paint to go into all of those designs. Now for getting this oxidized kind of a look, I'm mixing gold, silver and black. It's just, it just comes together beautifully and I'm more convinced about the color uh, looking much better than just going with a uh, silver or just a silver and a black. So this is where the flat brush comes super handy for me. Again, this is no, this is nothing fancy. Um, I in fact got this brush at IKEA um, near, I think if I'm not wrong, probably used for polishing furniture. So I'm guessing you'll, you'll get something like this even at a hardware store. So you don't really have to go ahead and buy something too costly. Just use what you have. Um, the reason, I'm, I prefer using a flat brush like this is uh, because it does give a little bit of stiffness. The brush, the bristles of this particular paintbrush is not soft um, as the regular paint brushes that um, I use. So which is why I said, you know, there's, there's a high chance that you might find something suitable maybe in a hardware store. So this is a, this is a more convincing oxidized color for me. So once everything is done, I add a couple of highlights with this beautiful um, red color, maroon color. And believe it or not, the painting is almost done. <laughs> like I said, it's uh, the set comes together um, very quickly, and uh, when it's when it's assembled, it's just so beautiful. So this is for the beads. Um, I I am going with this particular method of rolling, um, you know, the beads and the paint in my palm. So if you are allergic, just go ahead and use a brush and uh, paint them individually. They are in too many beads, so uh, it wouldn't take too long to paint them. So I have all of the painted elements ready, completely dry now. Time to varnish. This is the product I use. Give it a good shake and transfer a little bit of the contents into a bowl or a container. And using a broad soft bristle brush, I apply a generous coat. Some of you have asked me if I um, basically paint the beads, the gungru beads. I paint every part of it, every side of it. I just don't do the front. I do the front, sides, back, everything. So typically what you'll see me do is I paint the front, um, I make sure that the stick beads don't stick to each other so I kind of separate it a little bit and I keep it for some time and then go on to do the back part uh, once, the once the front is completely dried. And this is how I have basically varnished the beads, uh, put it on a toothpick and then a sponge and uh, that's how I'm just letting them dry. So I have everything ready over here, painted, varnished, completely dry, time to assemble. So I start off, um, so I'll, I'll probably give you a brief description of what I'm using. So obviously that was E6000 and the stud posts. 
these are jump rings these are heavy gauge 6 mm jump rings crimp covers i have um, tassel uh, you know these kinds of uh, cords uh, how i've made um i'll probably try and link some of those videos in the description box as well that was a gear wire these are a couple of seed beads i got these from india long long time ago and uh, i i haven't i haven't had a chance to use them so that's that's why i'm using them that was uh, crimp beads and my set of pliers i start off with assembling the earring first um the studs basically i apply a little bit of the e6000 and to the stud post and i stick it down and i make sure i give it a good press uh that's a very necessary step for me all the time because just sticking it would not uh, sometimes uh, help it's it's always be best that you you know just make sure it is really intact this is the gear wire you've seen me do this a bunch of times i put the crimp bead followed by a jump ring and then again through the crimp bead i use my set of pliers and i just make sure i give it a good press and it's all locked in i cover this crimp bead with a crimp cover and try and neatly press it down so that it looks like a beautiful round bead and there you go i've been assembling i'm using a seed bead in between each of the colored beads the seed bead is in black This is a combination I've never really worked with that much and uh I just I just thought I should. So like I said how how I how I began assembling this piece is how I ended as well. So I've done the same thing. I have uh passed the um the gear wire through a couple of more beads. I just trim off the excess And there. The only thing left now is to attach the dories. I just open up the jump rings using my set of pliers and attach the dories or rather the cord. The set looks really nice, uh, you know. muted in a way but again uh, just really nice when it comes together um, so i really hope you all enjoyed watching this video everyone please do let me know what you think of the video in the comment section and uh, happy onam to each and every one of you again uh, thank you so much for watching